We talk about a lot of history here. So. A lot of history. Yeah. All right. We are. You rolling? Almost. Cool. Soonish. Now we are rolling. See? Look at that. We look good. Yeah. We look amazing. We uh, wow, that's Stavros from the Atlas Moth next to me. We are right outside Kuma's Corner, the original Kuma's on Belmont, Belmont and Francisco. Uh, we're going to eat Kuma's burgers. We're going to talk about Kuma's Fest happening June 27th, really about a block away from here. But before we do, I should mention Stavros from the Atlas Moth. This episode is sponsored by CNH Financial Services. Business owners, are you tired of your hard earned profits going toward paying expensive fees every time your customer pays with a credit or debit card? We're happy to announce our partners at CNH Financial Services have the solution. CNH is the fastest growing financial services company in Illinois as recognized by Inc. Magazine. And their patented technology allows you to eliminate 100 or 100 Southside. We got 100, yeah. 100 <laughs> percent of the fees associated with accepting credit and debit cards as a form of payment. That's right. The Atlas Moth, 100 percent of the fees. CNH will also upgrade your business to the industry's leading point of sale system to streamline every aspect of your business for no cost. No cost. Visit freeprocessingnow.com or call 855 600 2437 extension 999, which is 666 upside down. Very metal, true. Yeah, metal. Quite metal indeed. and start saving money today. I got to keep it real because you are metal AF, as it's the kids true. say. That's what I think the kids say. I haven't, uh, I can't confirm that as I'm old now, but you, you, I think they say that. They, they do say that. Okay, so we have two Kumas burgers here. We do. Kumas Fest, the first ever Kumas Fest, is happening, as I said, June 27th. This is a show right basically right across the street from here. You guys, the Atlas Moth, are playing, Converge is playing. Freaking Anthrax is headlining. Goddamn Anthrax. Goddamn Anthrax. Uh, who else is on the bill? Uh, Russian Circles, who are good friends of ours. Instrumental? Instrumental, yeah. Uh, toured with those guys in 2014, actually. We did a Canadian tour, which no one should ever do. Uh, Wait, why is that? I love Canada. Not for that Not long. for musicians? <laughs> it's, you know, there's a whole lot of space between places in Canada. Right. I can see that. So it's probably not economically sound because you're you're traveling more than you're actually playing. Correct. Yeah, and you're also doing like two days of driving. Also, like moose. Actual moose. Actual moose. We were told several times by several different people, Canadian residents, if you will, I will, that we will not drive at night because we will die. Wow. By hitting a moose. Mooses. Moose. moose. I think it's just moose. Uh, all right. So real quick, the burgers we got from Kumas, which by the way, you have tons of history with Kumas. Kuma's is, it's just, it's the best burgers in Chicago, honest to God. Uh, you got the burger of the month, the BOTM, uh, oh, and the burgers of the month are different at all the different locations. So if you go to West Loop or Indianapolis, uh, you're going to get <laughs> Vernon Hills, Schaumburg, you're going to get different Schaumburg. burger. Schaumburg. I've been to the Schaumburg and Vernon Hills locations multiple times. Uh, the burger of the month on Belmont is Insect Warfare. There's actually two, I believe. Or are there? Yeah, there's Insect Warfare, and then there is the Dead to Fall. Hold this up if you can, right there. Hold this it a little closer. It looks real ridiculous. I, I, I'm not even sure of everything that's on there. It sounded amazing when I read the menu. Yeah, it's a it's like a bacon, corn, chili, goat cheese medallion. The burger is just a starting point for so, the for the. For the it, to, <laughs> well, they keep piling stuff. On oh top yeah, of, of course, it. yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, we we've had the burger of the month twice. The Atlas Moth has been a burger. Two different versions. Two different versions. Uh, the most recent one. Now, it, it's a very chi- Chicago burger, Chicago, the Atlas Moth, yeah. I mean, because you're a Chicago band. But it, I, I remember it had, like, Italian beef and jardinera. And... It had a hot Italian sausage, jardinera marinara, Italian beef, and a fried basil leaf. Oh, my God. By yeah. the way, I only say jardinera. When I'm with people from Chicago, if I'm talking to anyone from out of town, it's Jardinera. Yeah, of course. You got to teach these people. You got to train these children. <laughs> but, up. you know, you, when in Rome, when in Chicago, yeah, Jardinera. Uh, Jardinera. Someone just commented. I can't see who's commenting on this software. Please don't die. Please don't die. Well, it's funny you should mention that. This is the Neurosis, which is, I. This is it, the first burger I ever had here. This is my favorite. It's classic. It, it's, it's like a mushroom Swiss. Yeah, and they're good friends of ours. The band so, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are metal AF. <laughs> That's a bold move there. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Here. I don't know what you're doing. This seems like it. This is you have you have a lot of experience doing I, food in the car. Though. Now my first rodeo in the car. Right, right. right. Uh, in fact, at this point in my life, I only eat food in the car. Just yeah, only at home. I'm sorry, kids. Just go. Dad, to dad's take going out. in the car. Yeah, yeah. nice. 
Love to stay and eat, eat with the rest of the family, but I can no longer eat like an adult. I just eat in the driver's seat of my car. Look at that. That's like a corn patty. Thing. It has like some tomatilla salsa. I, uh. Yeah. I had to tell my girlfriend when I dropped over work about this, and she was very mad that I was uh, eating Well, see, here's my secret, because I, I go through this every time I do car con carne, when my family says, what do you have for dinner? Did you like it? Knowing full well they had like macaroni and cheese. <laughs> it was okay. It was just all yes. right. You know, overrated, not very good. When in reality, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, shit. Me personally, I like to rub it in. Do you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. um, Me and my girlfriend have been together for nine years. (laughs) We have a very good... So all bets are off at this point. Uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. We try to to outdo each other quite a bit. See, here's the thing about you, Stavros, of the Atlas Moth. And you've done this podcast before. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. The internet has ruined the mystique of bands and artists. I couldn't agree more. Uh, the Atlas Moth is very metal. The last album, loud, abrasive, perhaps your most aggressive album to date. But in person, you are a charming, cuddly teddy bear. Well, I get it all out. That makes sense. It's a catharsis. It is, yeah. I mean, you can't be. It can't rain all the time. But I mean, for your fans, it's like, well, that's Stavros. He's, he's people. Just... People are quite taken aback. Usually, oh man, this is serious. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I barely got any of that food. Oh, my Lord. Look at that bite that I didn't take. Jesus. And I ordered uh, both of our burgers medium rare. That's fine. Here's the thing about Kumas. When you order medium rare at so many restaurants, you never really get a medium rare burger. Either it's still mooing <laughs> rare or they're cooking it medium or medium well. Kumas is one of the only restaurants I know of where if you say medium rare... They're going to nail it each and every time. I feel like that's, that's important. A, I feel like that's a newer thing, though. What do you mean? Well, like I said, we have a lot of history. Actually, I'm, I'm going to have to correct you. This is not the first Kumas Fest. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when was the first? Um, good God. Good um, God. 2000. God has no place at Kumas Fest. so true, actually. <laughs> 2008, there was a Kumas Fest. Now, I wound up being part of the booking for it. Oh, really? Oh, man. Because you were connected. Well, well, that was early in the life of the Atlas Moth. We didn't have an album out. We had that seven inch. We used to come here. We rehearsed every single day. Every night, we would come from Niles, where we practiced at my basement, in the house I owned, all the way down to Kuma's. And they would feed us for free. They made us feel way more important than we deserved to be. At the time. And, and that 7-inch, by the way, on display behind the bar. That was a 7-inch. Like, we gave them, there's five of us in the Atlas Moth. I hand-numbered 500 of those 7 inches. I love it. And I gave them number 6. Because I love it. to us, they were such big supporters of us. And if, honestly, if it wasn't for them raising our profile, I mean, I don't know if it would have taken us longer to get anywhere in the business. But How many restaurants in existence can say that, that they helped... I, develop yeah. a band I a mean, restaurant I'll tell you what Kuma's in my eyes and people might not recognize this now so far removed from it Kuma's made the entire scene this is the place well it's funny last time we did an interview it was probably three years ago we talked about when the Atlas Moth was starting it was not a friendly locally it was not a friendly environment to metal it was not no not really and so to have an anchor like Kuma's kind of cheerleading yeah the yeah. metal scene, that that was, they were an oasis. They were, you know, um, they took care of every local band. They treated us as we were just as big as every other band that was on their menu. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, before we had a record out, we would come here every night and we would have, you know, a comp tab because they knew that we didn't have any money and we were just rehearsing trying. Oh to yeah, do them. band starting out, forget it. Hey, band's thirteen years in, forget it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, so back then, you know, I had this bright idea. If I help, you know, help out bands when they're in town, let them sleep on my couch, help them book a show, play with them, and then we'll mm-hmm. play with them in their town and vice versa. So I wanted to be on this first Kumas Fest. So I offered my assistance in any way I possibly could. You kept hearing about things, hearing about things, nothing ever came to fruition. Three weeks before the book dates at Double Door, they hand me a list of bands that are playing. Uh huh. And that's it. That's all. That's as far as they've gotten. 
if this this list it had us, like I said, you know, we didn't have an album out. It had us headlining the night. You know what I mean? And it was just like, all right, like I'm not trying to make people hate, but other local bands hate us or resent us. You know, right. right. Um, also, this is just all mixed mosh. So I had to swoop it in the last minute and rearrange the lineup. And uh, we wound up well, the Atlas Moth as a band paid three or four of the bands because of shit. All sorts of shit went down. But, yeah, that was the first one. Uh, it was with Kong from Sweden headlining. Amazing. It was great. Uh, it was on the two coldest days of the year in, like, ten years or something like that. It was wild um, at Double Door. That was 2008. And then they've done some street fests. Um, I'm not sure if you would want to call that a festival, though. It's more of a street fest, right? But there was a Kumis Fest. All right, so here we are. The latest version... Latest iteration of Kumas Fest. I do have, I have notes. I always come prepared. Although, I'm not sure what I have at my feet and around me at this point. Me neither. I just, everything. <laughs> I, I have the complete list. I've got prices and everything. I got most of it in my head. All right, talk. Not Anthrax, Converge. Oh, there's a band I can't say, I almost said. Um, wait, wait, a band that hasn't been announced yet? Damn it. Stavros, you're awful. I didn't say who it was, right? No, you didn't. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> Russian Circles. Uh-huh. I feel like I'm missing a band in there. I literally dropped my notes somewhere. Hang on. Oh, there we go. No, these are all napkins. Uh, Indian is playing. We're right. playing. Dude, I think there's another band in there. I'm sure you're right. Well, I know there's a band that I can't talk about yet. I literally, all my notes... I don't even know where they went. This is terrible. I see no notes either. Like, I, I was prepared for this interview. We're going to totally wing it. Okay. Uh, but I know there are two prices. <laughs> like, the general admissions... So, <laughs> I literally... I've got to find these. Uh, general admission, I think, is like 40 bucks. I think it's like $39. Yeah. And VIP, I think, is 99 But that gets you, like, swanky bathrooms. Really? A reser- yeah, reserve section. A t-shirt. No shit. No shit. I had no idea about it. Yeah, so that sounds badass. I'm just and, there to yell into a microphone. What's that? I'm just there to yell into the microphone. I don't... All right, so talk a little bit about what it means to play this festival as I try to find these notes, because this is going to make me crazy. Well, there's a lot There's a lot of things, right? You know, I mean, first of all, uh, I, I honestly, like I said, we have so much history with Kumas, and they've always kind of been such a big supporter. It's an honor to be thought of, um, sure. to be a part of it, to begin with. Now, you add in the fact that, you know, we're playing with friends. We're playing yes. with, uh, uh, you know, bands I grew up listening to in Anthrax. Yeah, that's insane. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, I'm, I'm officially, what, three steps away from Metallica now. Yeah, I mean, you've got one of the big four playing exactly. right across the street at Brands Park. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's I think it's awesome. Um, I feel like they have, like, a giant uh, range of, of genres, too. Uh, representing yeah, the metal, it, and I think that's cool. That's you know? the beautiful like, thing about metal, too. Yeah, it truly is. You know? Well, it's funny. We talked about this, too, the last time I interviewed you. Uh, the Atlas Moth is really hard to pin down. Everyone wants to kind of pigeonhole you as a certain type of metal band, whether it's, you know, they're Doom, they're Sludge. It varies song to song. Well, yes, it does. And sometimes a couple of times in that song. Usually. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I believe um, my favorite was trying to describe us was like nailing jello to a wall. That's I think you said that last time and it, that's still that's it still brings true. It, it is absolutely perfect. You know, the funny thing is that it makes me feel really cocky. Because people are like, what kind of band are you in? I'm like, you know we're just like our own thing. Although <laughs> maybe like an asshole. Coen Noir, the the last album, I mean that was brutal start to finish. Yeah. That, that is a heavy album. We were pissed. About what? Everything. You know. Damn the man. Damn the uh, man. You know I mean I think we all had gone through so much shit. We've always gone through so much shit. You know, honestly, we've always had a billion things going against us. Mm-hmm. You know, um, always had like you know, if if we leave for tour, if there's a storm happening, you know, like, no matter what, uh, we've had vans break down on the first day. You know, we've we've gotten robbed by our merch guy. Really? <laughs> I did. I can't make this shit up. You know, like um, there's always been a little bit of. Um, a little bit of a thing against us, you know, and we've always kind of pushed forward, you know, but it's trying, especially the older you get, 
doing the whole music thing. Yeah. Know? So, you know, um, yeah, we were really angry. I and mean, I don't know, it kind of came out that way. Um, well, one of the standout songs, and I realize the album's already a couple years old, so we don't need to go too deep into it, but uh, Chloroform stands out because that to me is like walking through a horror movie. Perfect. Sonically, yeah. it's like being escorted through a horror movie, just the the sounds in that, the the, the terror that's created with that, so- that song. Are you, I can't remember. I know you, you're into wrestling and stuff. Are you into horror? I pretty much like five things. And it's music, horror movies, pro wrestling, comic books. So I, I'm I'm kind of going down the right track with chloroform. Yeah, yeah. We um have always taken a lot of uh, influence from horror scores. Mm-hmm. You know, we've ripped off some. <laughs> no one ever, <laughs> no one ever caught that shit. Huh. But there's definitely a. Um, Couple of lawsuits waiting for me out there if they ever caught on. But yeah, uh, haven't you been through enough already? Please, not enough. Please I don't, don't think. Please I keep, don't sue the keep, Atlas Moth. This is what happens. I keep pushing buttons, you know. But uh, no, yeah, we've always taken a big influence from horror. You know, all all throughout. The, um, also, the gamut of horror. You know, um, I was telling someone the other day about how I, I found a, um, <laughs> an essay from kindergarten about who my hero was, and it was Boris Karloff. So, wow. Yeah. Right. I was a weird little kid, strange adult too. So this was your destiny. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big horror, I'm a big horror fan. Yeah, I I love this time of year because once you get past December, all the Oscar movies are out of the theaters. It's true. And that's when movies put out or movie companies put out the, the films that are, I guess, higher risk. Yes, uh, which means January, all the horror. February is all all the it's all the stuff bombs. for me. Yeah, it's all the stuff I want to see exactly. Uh, someone just asked, do you have a CM Punk hat on? I do have a CM Punk hat on. Again, wrestling fan. Wrestling fan. Uh, now, Stavros goes way back. Like He went to like some of the earliest WrestleManias. That's true. I was at number two, six, 13, 17. So th- this is in yeah. his DNA. It's true. Yeah. It's funny. I interviewed CM Punk once in my life. This wow. is when I was on WGN. It was right after he signed on to do UFC. Oh, okay. And he was dead silent when I was trying to talk to him about UFC and WWE, the second I started talking about Thor and comic books, lit up like the 4th of July. You know what? I mean, I get it. My I, fa- some of my favorite interviews are when we talk about other stuff besides music. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. People want to know the, the person behind. Absolutely. Yeah. The music. By the way, how good is that? That looks, the Insect Warfare Burger. It is delicious. It is burning hot. Oh, super spicy? Yeah. Do you have enough napkins or is your nose running? I'm good. Um, I regret not getting a drink. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. It's okay. Uh, someone just wrote, my new hero, referring oh. to you. You are heroic. You're an inspiration to the kids of today. I am not a hero. <laughs> um, but, hey, why not? Why not? I'll take it. So back to the movies this time of year. I love this. Like, Gretel and Hansel just came out. We're recording this on February 13th. Fantasy Island comes out tomorrow. Oh, really? That looks kind of cool, right? It does look kind of cool. I, um... I can't say I'm super hip to what is exactly coming out. I knew, I knew uh, Gretel and Hansel's coming up. I'm not a big period piece guy. I'm not either. Yeah, I can't do it. I also really dislike, here's why I ruin everybody's day. I really am not into fantasy. As in, like, Dungeons and Dragons. I never and watched Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones. My girlfriend watched it. She fucking loved it. I couldn't handle it. I don't like swords. I don't like, you know, Knights of the Round Table. I'm the same way. Thing. Here's something interesting. What's the exception of Willow? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. When I was growing up, I thought I loved science fiction. I have no use for sci-fi anymore. That's because it kind of sucks, unless it's like Alien or Aliens and Total Recall. I love Total Recall. Is Terminator sci-fi? Yeah. I guess kind of. The last Terminator movie was garbage. <laughs> the last one? Or the last... About the last, like, several. Fair. They have... Okay, first of all, if you're going to retcon Terminator 2, you should... <laughs> And there's something wrong with you. It's like the greatest action film of all time. You're saying it didn't happen. It really is. Kiss my ass, all right? Like, that immediately was like, this movie is wrong and bad. Like, you can't tell me that Terminator 2 isn't the finest piece of film from 1992 ever. My you God, know? it like, was. Oh, it still is. I put that movie on and it looks better than 90% of movies that come out. For real. You know? And, like, you're going to tell me that didn't happen? And I don't know if I asked you this before. Do you have a favorite... Like, what are your favorite horror movies? Horror movies? Yeah, specifically. Uh, this probably changes a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I gotta say Texas Chase on Massacre, right? So that, are, you, are you more of, like, a slasher? No, no, I like, I like everything. I, how about this? I mean, like, I could say that, like, of recent times... Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really liked this movie called Faults 
Which, I don't know this. Uh, it might not be horror, horror. It's about cults. I, I'm, I'm all in. It's uh, Leland Oster. He was the uh, the guy that uh, was with the hooker uh, in Seven. Okay. With the knife. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And he's in a movie called The Guest. I don't know. Another he's one. in Taken. Yeah. He's one of um, Liam Neeson's like, tech guy. He's Liam Neeson's tech guy. Fault is incredible. There's a movie called uh, The Interview from about the same time. I think it's like 2016. About a dinner party. The Invitation. The Invitation. Excuse me. Dude. That movie is incredible. I will tell people about them. Anyone who will listen, I will tell about that movie. That movie and Faults are my two favorite of that year. The Invitation is one of my favorite endings. Oh, it's incredible. With the lights. Oh, my. Ding. Sorry. Spoilers. I'm God. fucking awful at this. <laughs> Holy um, shit. The Invitation. Okay, so some background. A guy and his wife separated, broken up, divorced, whatever. Um, the wife invites the ex and his new girlfriend to a dinner party in the Hollywood Hills. They get there and things just seem strange. Like, everything's a little weird. The, the company they keep... There's something going on there. They're, they're, well, they also disappeared for a few years. Yes. And they invited all their old friends, including the ex-husband and new wife. Right. So, it's like a reunion. It's like a reunion. And you kind of see it through the ex-husband's eyes. And he's kind of made to feel like he's overreacting to the stuff he's seeing. And you're, you're kind of thinking, well, is he kind of imagining how... Is he just being a dick? He, he seemed like a dick. And then things... Third act <laughs> just completely exacerbate and it just goes off the rails and it's just this wonderful slow burning movie. It's incredible. It um, is incredible. That that director, I forget her name. I'm waiting for her to release something else. She had jazz. one of the uh, sequences in Double X, which was right. An Wasn't anthology. a huge fan of that. I agree. Now, uh, ABCs of Death. You go to the original one? Mm-hmm. I think it's Q or R has the girl that was on our second album cover is in that. Get out of here. Yeah. She posed nude um, for us on the album cover, and we projected images um, of a of slides of my mother's vacation to Japan in the 60s. That's fucked up. Yeah, it was really. <laughs> it's a lot of, like like I said, it's fun to box of slides. Yeah, they were really cool pictures. My mom had an eye. And I just like, you know what? Why don't we project these on a girl? And it worked so well. But, um, you know, I had like, you know, we used probably 15 pictures. I think I had about 900. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. You know, so I went, I had to go through them all and pick it all out because I'm the art guy. And uh, needless to say, she popped up on the on the screen and she was naked. And I was like, I know, I know her. You know, I couldn't figure out where. Right. And finally it snapped. It was like, oh, that's right. I have like 900 naked pictures of her. A great girl. Her name is Liz Harvey. She was such a champion. Oh, my God. She was freezing, and she just kept going. It was great. She was such Bro. a dream to work with. Uh, by the way, Kuma's ketchup is spicy. It's a jalapeno ketchup. It's awesome. It's it's the only acceptable ketchup. It is the only acceptable. It's now, very true. Something I learned about you, Stavros, before we started recording. You've never finished a Kuma's burger. I don't understand how that could be. I am not a psycho. Uh, I, <laughs> I, feel like, like I like to bring it home. Mm. You know? You know, I mean, it's, it's. I like to leave it all out in the field. I, I have before, as far as like destroying the second half. Uh huh. You know what I mean? It, See, it feels like I haven't done anything yet. You look like you haven't done anything. I'm trying my best over here. I, I feel like it's somehow regenerated as we've been <laughs> yeah, talking. Yeah, it keeps growing. Uh-huh. You know, I'll tell you what. I pointed this out in the picture of this online. It didn't look as mighty. What do you mean? Like the picture, if you look at the picture of this online, I feel like the burger patty didn't look this big. That could be. Like it was like a trick photography. Which to make me feel like I wasn't going to gorge myself. It looks even better when you eat it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Am I excited that it's bigger? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not upset about it. But I'll tell you what, I looked at it and I'm like, you know, that seems doable. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there though. The neurosis is really. I'm telling you, it's champion burger. They do have a lot of burgers that are super spicy. If heat's not your thing, this is a good option. It is. I've seen the guys from Neurosis eat Neurosis burgers. <laughs> and I've made the joke about cannibalism. Mm-hmm. They didn't really get it. That's cool. Though. <laughs> I, last time I came to this location was for the uh, resurrection of the ghost burger. I never had it. It was amazing. 
Also super spicy. Yeah. Oh, and it has like ghost peppers on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of those where five minutes in, the back of your head starts to sweat. That's what's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't... I've gone to the menu here. Um, I rarely get around to eating it, to be honest with you. I think I came here a couple months ago. You know, I used to be here every day. I, I definitely burnt myself out a little bit on coming here so often. But no doubt, every time I eat it, it's just as good as last, you know. Mm-hmm. If not better, in all honesty. I, mean, I feel like they've really gotten it down. Mm-hmm. It is just a consistent meal. It really is. Yeah. All right, so Kuma's Fest, the full lineup, because I have my notes now. Yeah. Tell me what it is. Um, Anthrax, Converge, Russian Circles, The Atlas Moth, and Indian. Right. I was and, right. And maybe another band. Who knows? Maybe. Probably not. No. I wouldn't bank on it. No. Uh, general admission, 39 bucks. VIP, 99 bucks. At Brands Park, here's how much goodwill Kuma's instills. They're putting all these bands across the street in a, in a park that has a baseball field, lots of residential. Like, they just know the neighbors will accept it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... They've had several street fests on Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff ends by nine. Yeah. I guess we're going to do. Yeah. And we're going to hear, so they're going to have Indian play. We're going to hear Indians from Anthrax. It's going to be like the most. It's quite a, a, a diverse lineup. Which, again, that's the beauty of metal. That's true. Yeah. The fact that we got the instrumental thing going. We have the Atlas Moth, who doesn't sound like Anthrax. No, no, I wish. <laughs> I, I've always tried to sound like things. It just never works out that way. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to mention this is the last transmission from the late great planet Earth. This right here. This is? Yeah, this this broadcast. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Just to carry through the uh, Atlas Moth theme. What's the relationship like with you and Dave vocally? Uh, what do you mean? Like I, working stuff out, sharing the vocal. Man, I'm so proud of our relationship because it used to be very, very rough. Is it just aging and maturity and Absolutely. becoming better songwriters? One hundred percent. Like, I think him and I used to fight more over who gets the spot. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes we wouldn't give up the spot, and it worked out great when we mm-hmm. both did it. You know, and then sometimes, honestly, you know, I, I feel in hindsight not so much, but nowadays it's. I think we both gotten so much older and just we. I mean, we. I've lived. I lived with him for almost dead, ten years. Um, Ship. Him and I have been very close friends for 13 now, you know. Um, you know, it's we've gotten, we've really learned how to work with each other, and we mm-hmm. realize that we want the best for each other. You know, we're not That's trying it. to step on each other's toes or, you know, trying to get the spotlight or all, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good work. Not, it's it's a, something I'm very proud of as, as it's matured over the years. That's for sure. So two years since Come Into Our, are, are you writing? Are you, are you working on stuff? Uh-huh. I came from rehearsal tonight. Oh, really? I came right. I went home and showered and came to meet you. Really? Yeah. Are you, well, it'll obviously be a shorter stretch between Coma Noir and this one. I'm hoping so, yeah. Um, you know, I don't believe in rushing it anymore. Um, I feel like when we came on out, there was still that mentality of you got to tour, 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 tour. No, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. I don't think that's the thing anymore. I agree. You know, I think that you need to give people a little bit of a break. You got to be missed a little bit, you know, and... You know, you, you talked about, I don't know if we were recording at the time, you talked about how the internet has kind of taken away the mystique of music. And that's something that honestly speaks so deeply to me. Because I was telling this exact thing to a friend the other day. Growing up, a band would put out, and this is, mind you, when I say gr- me growing up, this is later years here where mm-hmm. the internet was a thing when bands had web pages. Right. You know, you'd go and a band would put out a new album and you'd get revamped the website new bio, mm-hmm. you know, new promo photos, a new web store, whoa, you know, and then, you know, they had tour dates, you know, you saw your tour dates, you saw when they were playing Metro, right, mm-hmm. and then you saw they were going to Europe, or vice versa, right, and then you maybe read, read about them in a magazine a couple times, mm-hmm. and then a, a six months, eight months after that album came out, you didn't know if they were still a band, you know, and then like a year later, their fucking website hasn't been updated in a year. So true, and and the only thing you can hope is that your favorite band still has all the members, mm-hmm. and still is a band, you know. And then like, you didn't know, and I'm not saying that. I personally get really annoyed that everyone thinks that we break up every two years because we don't. I don't post that I'm you know going to Target to buy new underwear every day or. I read that. You know, <laughs> well, you know, I don't Snapchat my uh, me feeding my dogs. You know, sorry, but and like I that. I like 
I like having a little bit of the mysterious. I like not being complete. I don't want to be available all the time. And I think that that's something that I want to embrace and not be so... I want to be mysterious. I want. It's a fine line too because you want to be accessible to your fans. One hundred percent. I feel like I'm. All, you know, that's the thing. You you say something to us, we respond. Mm-hmm. You know, we're always accessible. But like, you're gonna find you're gonna only hear from us when there's something that is worth hearing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you're not gonna hear about. You will hear about me eating in a car with you, but you're not gonna hear about me going to Target after this to buy underwear. Right. Maybe. I, mean, I guess you now know that. that so kind of my plan. So will there be new music? There's got to be at Kuma's Fest. Yeah, it'll probably drop a song. You know, uh, it, I'll tell you what. You know, when you start writing your fifth album, every album is harder than the last. You know, and uh, in the interim between this and Coma, you know, Coma, like I said, you know, we get no, we got better press on Coma than we've ever gotten. You got great press on that album. It was incredible. You know, uh, and then we still got you know. A kick in the balls over and over on that on the touring cycle on that you know our uh, long time booking agent uh, retired from booking at the ripe old age of 32 or something oh, God. what an asshole I still love him <laughs> but like he was the best booking agent we, like, we had fought to get a good booking agent we had one and he just and he, you know what he was too good of a guy to be a booking agent as, I as get far that. as I'm concerned because I think you have to be a real terrible human being to be a booking agent unfortunately I get that you know so he had he retired right as I like literally he bothered me for two years. Hey, you want to do this tour? Hey, you want to do that tour? Like, man, we're writing. Just give us our time, and we're gonna make it happen. No, nope. I sucks. tell him that we have a release date, and he goes, "Yes, let's be the tour that like that we're gonna book right around the release date. That's gonna be the last tour I'm booking ever. For, period for anyone." It's I'm a like, drag. So you know we got a new booking agent who didn't quite get it. We did a bummer of a tour, and then we went out with Zayo, which was fantastic. And then we did a tour right after that with a band called Paradise Lost, which I enjoyed the people. Uh, I enjoyed mm-hmm. hanging with them. But truthfully, uh, this goes back to us not being in a box. People want to say we're a doom band, but then we go out there with a classic doom band, and they don't get it. You know, so you know we ended and we lost a lot of money on that tour. A lot of shows got canceled on that tour. That sucks. And uh, obviously, that's not on us. That's on the headliners. It's, you know, their tour. Right, but. but- it hurts us more than anybody, uh-huh. you know? So we came home a little broke. And, you know, when you do this for so long, and, and you know, it gets harder to really bounce back from certain things, you know? Sure. And once again, we're all in our mid-30s now, you know? And it's kind of like, hey, you know what? Instead of uh, going out there and throwing away my life right away, I'd like to kind of, like, get a little stability here. Yeah, just push the reset button a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so, you know, and then granted, you know, like, I don't think people really wanted us to take another couple years to put on the record, but factually... Uh, we want to remain a band, mm-hmm. and to remain a band, sometimes you got to step back, you know. And uh, two of us opened up bars, uh, you know. Another one opened up a, an online store that's doing really well, you know. What I mean, like we all have other things in our life that we want to maintain and still continue to be the Atmos Moth. We can be the Atmos Moth for the rest of our lives. So let me get this straight: after the instability of being a, a touring metal band, you opted for the stability of opening up a bar. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, I I won't get into my business arrangements, although it's a fairly foolproof one. I won't okay, say that. Uh, and also, it's doing really well. So there's that, you know, uh, Dante's Tavern. Love uh, Dante's. Yeah, so go grab a slice of pizza. But yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's all about this, though. You know, and I can tell you this from our first record and our second record, you know, I hated being at home. Mm-hmm. I wanted to just be on the road all the time. I didn't like being home ever. And as I got older, I kind of liked being home. You know, and I like choosing my shots. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like, you know, you, you tour and you play Brooklyn six times in a year. I don't care who you are. You're not drawing the same amount of people every time. Right. You know, especially yeah, you nowadays. you a point of diminishing returns. A hundred percent. You know, you can't, you can't expect people nowadays with so many bands, so many records, so much, like, influx of music and entertainment all at our fingertips that are all available that we can all spend such little money on. It still all adds up. It's like going to the dollar store. <laughs> you know, you think everything's going to be cheap, but at the end of the day, you're still spending 60 bucks. Absolutely. You know, and like, uh, you know, I mean, how about this? I couldn't afford all that, so I, how can I expect people to afford that too? It's so true. And it, I, at a more macro level, all these big concert tours and concerts are being announced this time of year for the summer. For a concert goer, you really have to be selective about what you can afford and what you go to. 100%. And so many bands get sacrificed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's unreasonable for, to expect people to be able to afford that kind of bank. And then you have the festivals, which just draw a bunch of people to see um, a band out of their element, usually. Mm-hmm. As far Unlike as Kuma's Fest, which is bands in their element. Well, kind of yes and no. But I'm saying, like, look at Psycho Vegas. 
Oh, right. There's like 60 bands on that. Some of those bands are playing at 2 in the morning. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, yes, uh-huh. you can spend one flat rate and go and see all this in one great weekend, I'm sure. But would I rather have you come see us at Empty Bottle? Of course, of Any course. day of the week. Any day of the week, you know? But yeah, I mean, you can't uh, can't keep going back to the well so fast. All right, so new music is in the works. For it's the imminent. Month. Uh, June 27th, you are playing, along with all those other bands, Anthrax is headlining, holy shit, happening right here on the northwest side of Chicago. Uh, more important than any of this, who's your favorite wrestling heel of all time? Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Seems like a no-brainer. Although, uh, yeah. Right? As time marches on, I'm kind of leaning towards Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is the greatest wrestler of all time. Interesting. He is the only one that has ever reinvented himself over and over. He has gotten over a plant. Uh, he's gotten over a list. He's gotten over a lamp. The man <laughs> can get over it. I mean, I have a great Chris Jericho story. Fantastic. Uh, was it 98 Metallica? Days of the New Jerry Cantrell? Do you recall this story? Uh, vaguely. Was this, was this, this was Garage Inc. era? It was Reload. 98? 90, yeah, 98. Okay. Oh, yeah, th- yeah. Well, wait, 97, late 97 was uh, Reload. Yeah. Why do I know that? It's fucking insane. Because you're Reload. metal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was called Metallica Steve in high school. <laughs> um, so anyway, they did a shed tour that summer. I went to several shows in a row. I was part of the Metallica club, if you will. Uh, you got the premium tickets. Uh, you buy them before they went on sale. You only got the first five rows. It was awesome. So I talked my parents into letting me go with my sister. We drove to Tennessee, Indianapolis, oh my West, Lord. Wisconsin. Right? Three days in a row. Um, in, I want to say it was in Indianapolis. Uh, James Heffitt was throwing out guitar picks. And I motioned for him to throw me away. And he didn't have any more. And he walked away. And I was like, well, that's a bummer. The next day, Metallica comes out. They start playing. As Metallica starts playing, Chris Jericho walks out. And he's between me and the stage and the guardrail. Right. Now, I'm a Jericho-holic from way back. I'm a big fan. And I'm like, this is cool. My favorite band. One of my favorite wrestlers. Holy yeah. shit. They go through their set. Comes like, you know, the, the very end. They're throwing out guitar picks. James looks at me. And he goes, oh. Like, he recognized me. And I was like, Crazy. holy shit. I'm like 13 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm over my, over my, like, you know, I'm, I'm loving this, right? Of he goes, he grabs me a pick and he looks at me. We made eye contact. And he goes and he throws it to me and just turns around and walks away. He didn't confirm capture. Uh huh. This guitar pick comes and bounces off the palm of my hand. And it lands in between the guardrail and the stage on the ground right in front of Chris Jericho. Okay. And I go, Jericho, Jericho. Can you give me my guitar pick? And Jericho looks at me, he looks at the guitar pick, he looks at me, and he does this. And he grabs the guitar pick and he runs off. That's amazing. It was like getting hit with a steel chair. That was what a <laughs> Yeah. That, that's I, kayfabe right there. Like, damn right it is. Yeah, he fucking was living the gimmick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I still I still want to bring this up to Jericho. It'll happen eventually, I'm sure. I mean Fozzie's around. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have the same AR guy. Really? He signed Fozzie to Century Media, I believe. So, yeah, it'll happen. That's a great story. I know, yeah. I've been waiting to tell him that he's on the list. The, the unha- My list. unhappy ending. That is such a heel move. It, it was a total heel move. Wow. And he was a heel at the time, that bastard. All right. So, back to your band, The Atlas Moth, again, June 27th. I want to thank everyone at Kumas. It truly... I love I love coming here. I've never had a bad meal. I've never had a bad burger. I've only had exemplary, fantastic food at Kuma's Corner. I've never been disappointed. Like never. I said, they've always been such allies. And I don't think that people realize how important that is when you're a young man. You know? They yeah, were it can't such be overstated, a, yeah. They were Oprah's burger of the fucking year or whatever while they were pimping our name out in their right. menu. That's insane if you think about it. You know, like, and obviously I'm not really expecting so many returns from the Oprah crowd. Right. But, you know, I mean, we were on that map, and it, it meant a lot, and it still means a lot. I mean, I right. love going in there and still noticing our 7-inch up there How and not covered up, you know? Yeah. Granted, it's stuffed in the corner, but it's small. It's there. It's, it's there. It's still there, you know? All right. Love your band. We're going to see you June 27th. That's right. Making some big noise right across the street. Absolutely. Uh, go get your tickets. The general admission... Thirty nine ninety nine to see all those bands it's in the summer. It's a long show. It's going to be a long show. You know, it's going to be a long show. There's vendors, too, I believe, right? Well, there will be 
Kuma's Burgers there. One would hope. Well, I, I think that's part of the deal. I think that's, so. That's part of the deal. That's a great night. I mean, I didn't know that there was a VIP ticket, so you probably know more than me. Let's face facts here. Because well, I went to the website. <laughs> but here's the thing. It is cold as hell as we're recording this. Or actually not cold as hell. We'll say cold as fuck. It's cold as fuck. It's cold as fuck right now. Yeah. Uh, it's nice It's nice to think about summer. End of June, it's going to be hot. We're all going to want to cut loose some incredible metal bands right here on the northwest side. Get your tickets. We'll see you there. Thank you, Kumas. Thank you, Stavros of the Atlas Moth. Thank you for having me on again. Thank you for watching or listening or however you're consuming this podcast. And uh, thanks also to CNH Financial Services, who sponsored this episode. That was very kind of them. All right. Thank you. I'm going to turn this off now so we can finish our burgers and not feel like absolute pigs as we do it. Nice. <laughs>